Well, we're back again, a couple days after uh, Tuesday session. So I've just set myself up, done a little warm up, and uh, we're just gonna go through for our first warm up ball. I have actually mapped out a run out this time, so we'll <laughs> see how this goes. Just don't relax, pull the string. Not a bad first start. Ball swung away nicely, outside off. So, yeah, I think just these first first six, just my warm-up balls, I'm just gonna try and stay relaxed. Very similar to what I did last time. Uh, I'm just looking to get that flow, that rhythm back. Oh, oh that was really nice. I think that went straight over the top of off. Potentially some swing. Didn't see too much though, but um, really nice. If you guys watched the, uh, the first one on Tuesday, when I posted it, I think I posted it Wednesday, uh, you would have seen the lines and lengths were all over the shop based on a couple of things that I was, um, that I was working on. And so from what I've done, I've actually put together a clip of an Instagram post of the things that I've I picked out. So that'll be posted soon, but essentially, um, it's going to filter into what I'm doing here. And something that I picked out was my release point. As I get the ball up here, I kind of bend it as I release it here. So there's two photos I've got the Instagram post. You can sort of see I'm releasing it down here. So one of the things I'm keen to do today is I'm going to use a cue like each side of my palm, I'm looking to present towards the batsman and get all my energy behind the ball so I can get that seam up and get that swing away. And so far with that ball there, that was as close to perfect as I think I can hopefully get it which is a really good sign for what I can do today. And um, I'm still, I'm gonna a little bit focus on this string line, see if I can get my feet um, landing a bit better under my hips. I did do some run throughs at the start, just to have a feel and see what it looked like when I was trying a few different cues, but um, I think that'll be an interesting one to, to feel because I can feel my legs go across and look, awareness is, awareness is where it starts. <laughs> So that one down leg, I can actually feel my run up on that ball. Uh, yeah, didn't quite get that, that same flow here. And um, you'll see in the footage last week that when my run up didn't feel quite so comfortable, I did, um, I did find that I, I struggled to get this right. And that's just a simple compensation. So it's something that you need to be quite wary of. If the run up doesn't flow well, you're going to compensate down there. Nice smooth run up, build up. Now it's better. Outside off, don't mind that at all. That's four balls, I think. I'm not really great at counting. Uh, I should probably take a second just to refocus on what I want to do because it's so easy to get caught up in the, in the, the flow, I should say, because yes, I want to flow, but I have to remind myself what I'm actually trying to achieve here, you know, one simple nice cue. So I am gonna focus on a nice rhythm, but I still wanna make sure I'm thinking about this energy behind the ball. Whoa. I think that came out pretty good, based on what I'm trying to achieve here. Felt like I had the energy sort of nicely there. One thing I noticed with that one is that, because I'm visually, or I'm cueing myself to think about this, I can feel that I'm not getting that snap down, which is okay. It's so easy to think oh, I'm, not, I'm doing this, but I'm not doing that. When you focus on the thing you're not doing, and then you end up moving yourself away from what's actually working to go to the next sort of sequence, and then that thing doesn't work, and then you end up back to square one. There's a little important coaching insight. A bit down leg, but I felt like the same was okay there. So that's my, um, my first over done. I did put a bit more energy into um, that last one, just to sort of see how it felt to get a little bit behind it, a little bit behind it, and, um, and you can see how we go. I have actually filmed my, um, my side on views this time, because I thought, let's see, we change a couple of camera angles, <laughs> see if we can get a bit of side on footage too. I'm not gonna be thinking about the, you know, anything to do with bracing the front leg. That's gonna come later down the track. It is something that I have worked on in the past, but I know full well that if I can get my running mechanics right, it's gonna flow really nicely into this sort of stuff. So there's definitely no need 
to try and do it all at once, which a lot of people try to do. And when you try and do too much at once, you end up doing nothing well and you come straight back to square one. So what was the point in the first place? God damn it. So tab run up. I've had this issue yesterday. It's interesting trying to work off something that's just, well, it's obviously not my full run up. And uh, I do have a, I did, <laughs> I did do the village thing again and I kind of jogged it out. But you can see how easy it is when you jog it out and you feel like, here we just a little bit tense or excited. I could be overexcited. I am really keen to feel that release up here to, to lose that patience. Then I might accelerate too early. I end up getting myself into poor positions and there we go. So I felt that one there, that was not the release point that I'm after, which uh, I think when I go back to the footage, this could be one of the ones that I'll pull out for future analysis to show you guys what I mean. Uh, again, I sort of felt the run up a little bit, not quite where I wanted it to be. So I put a little bit more energy into the jump, which could potentially put me out of whack. And then if I'm so slightly falling down here, it just, just pushes there. The wrist almost like does that. That, if you can see that. So energy behind the ball. One thing that worked really well yesterday, not yesterday, on Tuesday, was getting that palm in here. And one of the things that I did in the past was I kind of pull my front arm up and down now here's an inter interesting coaching insight. I don't coach the poor ripper chain down. I think Brett Lee was someone that used to talk about that. Even looking at his action, he'd come out here and then pull it in. And the reason why I think this is kind of silly is that you're not looking to pull yourself down. You want to pull yourself forward. And then when you pull yourself forward, you kind of rip that right shoulder around so you can come up and over with the bowling arm and then hit that deck nicely. When I used to bowl, I'd come and be here I wouldn't actually get the front arm into my side. It'd just be here and I'd kind of come over the top of myself. So my body's not working very well together. And the, the elbow, the, the palm towards the batsman was a really nice cue that I was using that um, I think was just getting me into some really nice positions. So I've got two things here to work on. Now, obviously doing two things at once isn't going to be all that successful, but they kind of work together. So I'm still chasing that feeling. I want the energy behind the ball, which was working really nicely when I backed off the intensity a bit. But I think I can use this to get a bit more intensity, and then we'll see how we go. Oh, yeah, that was nice. I even hit the string. So I feel like we are starting to find some... Um, I mean, I'm narrowing down what's working, and I think it'd be interesting to watch the side-on view for this one to see, compared to the earlier ones, is my elbow you know, coming down here when I'm getting in here. And that ball, I thought about this coming in. So I wonder if I actually did get in a bit more. We shall see. Oh. And that one felt pretty good behind the ball with the fingers. So uh, I'm happy with that. I might actually um, pause the footage here. Mainly because I don't want to film for too long just in case like <laughs> multiple videos don't work. Uh, always a tricky part. Is this one saved? Oh, phone's are just full. See? That's exactly what I was frustrated about. Fingers, please. For fuck's sake. So I've kind of looked back through the, uh, the footage just to see how I'm feeling with it all. And I think I am going to set up some constraints this time. I think um, the constraints are just such a a useful tool in your toolbox to use because it changes the environments that I don't so much need to think about it. Sure, I can sort of follow along with it, but the constraints are there to guide you. And so one thing that I've noticed, and I actually did get some, um, some side on footage, which is fantastic, but uh, the side on footage cut out, which was quite frustrating. But um, what I did see, which is something that I think I've, I've commonly done, is as this kind of rear leg comes through, it's quite passive. So I know in the video, or what I felt from last week about getting some more rotation from the hips, this is something that I, I was getting, but I can still get more snap, or I can get more like sort of kick through, more of an active sort of rear leg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this, maybe a little bit more further forward. So it's roughly on the, it's just, a, it's just above the popping crease. And all this is gonna do is I can't step through or I'm gonna kick it. Okay, so what I have to do, now that it's constrained there, is sort of snap my leg over the top. And the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer out a few cones to guide my follow through. 
which I think is going to help to keep me in some better lines. This is something that I think is um, really quite a nice sort of constraint to use because if you're following through nicely, it usually means that everything else is really nicely lining up. So I think this is gonna be a, uh, a handy little thing for me to use as I'm trying to um, align myself a bit better. And actually one thing I have to notice is that I think I've sort of set the string line up at about fourth or fifth stump. So I just need to make some small adjustments there because I wanna make sure that I'm aligning myself to release the ball at about off stump. And if I'm doing that, then from off stump, I wanna swing it away. So the, I'm sort of looking at my, my kind of generic stock ball to a, a, uh, a right-hander. Wouldn't be too great to a left-hander though. They'll clip that one away nicely. So, so we have some constraints. I did also notice that with the run-up, it is quite difficult to sort of get my feet working on, well, either side. I also found that sometimes I, I kind of spend more time, when well, I sometimes I do get it right, I actually spend more time running on, uh, like a bit further away from the string. So one foot runs on the string and one foot runs around the side. Uh, look, this is just something that I, I will be continuously working on. Um, and I bang and bang and bang on about running mechanics. So this is essentially how you start to apply it into your fast bowling stuff. It's always wonderful to have all the, you know, plyometric, the stiffness in the ankles, have some speed, but having a really good movement profile, you could call it that, I guess, if you want, but having a really efficient run up where the legs are coming through really nicely, which is going to mean that when you get to your jump, you get to your back foot contact, your movements are going to follow what you've previously done. And I want to make sure that I can maximize what I'm doing here by getting everything done here a lot more efficiently. That was interesting. I think I'm gonna to have to just adjust where I've got this. You know what? <laughs> because there's no umpire here, what's actually happening is that I'm bowling in a ball. Fuck you to all the people who are going to call me out for bowling in a ball. There's no umpire here and I haven't got a proper run up, so I'm okay with that. But it does also mean <laughs> that I can't be landing here with the constraint there. I need to bring it forward a little bit. So, but look, we're problem solving now. So there you go. Uh, first ball with that. Let's see how we go with the, the second. Well, I uh, definitely got my leg over that time. And uh, if you see from the, the video, it kind of swung away really, really nicely. Now, what's interesting to me feeling it now is that I'm finding two ways that I'm, actually I hope the side and footage has worked here. Do you know what, I might save it just to let's restart it. I am, um, what I found, sorry, but what I found is that I, I have I have learned I have taught myself to drag. That was something that I used when I was younger, um, and so dragging and then snapping, I felt like I tried to do that the ball before, and this time I just kind of landed and brought the knee up and over. So it's interesting to see how my body tries to organise to do it. I think um, I think the drag and snap is going to be something that I'll probably try to think about. So um, I am keen to actually see what the how my wrist was behind the ball that time because it swung really nicely away and I wasn't thinking about the energy behind the ball. It's always something that I'll have a feeling for, so I'll know it if I just do that. And you'll also see it dart down leg as well. So I also got the colour balls, which I think this the what you call it the nice straight. The multicolored ball, so I can see the angle there. <coughs> So that one wasn't quite there. I think I did feel the run up was a little bit messed up there, which is frustrating, but I think we'll, um, yeah, this run up's gonna be something really important. So if I don't get that flow into the crease, it's just not gonna work. So I'm definitely finding the constraints challenging. The run up's challenging. But we're, we're working with it here. Actually, this is, this is usually where I think a fast bowler will probably get frustrated. I, um, I haven't found any kind of flow, rhythm, feel. It hasn't felt good. And it'd be so easy just to kind of 
allow myself to get frustrated here, but I know full well, if I let my mind get frustrated, I'm gonna create a very terrible space for any kind of motor control or movement learning, so to speak. So I need to, well, remind myself to stay relaxed. I remind myself of my cues as I go through. Still not ideal. I'll go again. Still not happy with it. But we'll go once more. Whoa, well that last one was good. I don't know what you saw here, but I definitely felt like it came inwards and outwards as well. So I think that'll be interesting to have a look at. Hopefully it actually recorded on the side on. Yeah, it did. Sweet. All right, well, I think I've gotten some um, interesting stuff, which is really exciting. It's so nice having this whole place to myself. Thank you, SV Kampong. This is brilliant. So for those following along at home, um, you probably noticed that that over, uh, it just didn't particularly work out too well and I did set some constraints up to do it. Uh, this is essentially where I would say, as a coach, I've attempted to do too much. And it's very, very easy to think that when something is going nicely, i.e. I felt like I was getting some nice position behind the ball, it's easy to kind of go, oh, well, look, I'll just add an extra constraint in and then we'll see how it works. So I haven't looked at that last ball that I thought was, was better. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take away the constraints now. I, I'm going to take, take away the active leg sort of constraint. I'm going to stick with the follow through. I'm going to get back to what was working nicely before, which is the energy behind the ball. It's just so easy to try to do too much. And look, as a coach, put my hand up, I'm definitely guilty of it. But actually, I shouldn't say I'm guilty of it. Like, this is sort of part of the coaching process, right? You may have all seen that kind of diagram of like what success looks like. It's not a straight line. It's all squiggly. Well, this is me in the middle of that squiggly line going, I've just gone down because I've tried to add something in. But I'm going to learn from that quickly. Okay, six balls, not working, cut it, back to what was working, continue on. And that's a really important message, I think, because you could end up going further down. And then I did say before about the frustration thing, this is where sessions can sometimes end up creating more harm than good. And the best thing that you can do is to go home, come back fresh, and come up with a clearer mindset. <laughs> Lucky it's quite soft, but uh, yeah, let's go again. All right, so now I'm just back to energy behind the ball. I want to pull this in, nice and simple. Ooh. Nice little tail away there. It's one of the older balls, an older cooker. So it's nice to see that I can still get that one moving. Um, nice lines as well, I like, you know, sort of roughly around that off to um, fifth stump sort of channel, which I think is good. I have potentially brought the string line a little bit wider, which I like for myself. Oh, oh that was not good. Okay. I actually put some more effort in that time, so it'll be curious to see uh, how that ball looks from behind. Uh, I really felt the run-up flow nicely there. Um, so I thought, why not give it a little extra, little extra oomph. And who knows, potentially when I felt that kind of energy going in, I might have decided that I'll just give it a little extra here instead of thinking energy. Palm. Happens. So, down leg again to put some more energy in. But I think I can manage this. I think I can get it right with this extra bit of energy. And it's nice to kind of feel the body putting some effort in. But this is also where I've said to many of my fast bowlers, if you do have a compensation, the more energy you put into it, the more likely it is to feed into that compensation. Now, there's two sort of ways I could look at doing it. 
neither are wrong. You just learn from what's happening. I could back it off and um, just go to a, a little lighter intensity, or I can um, kind of continue with what I'm doing and just tidy out what I think I can get a bit better with. And so this front arm, I think I'm gonna think about quite a lot, but I think also thinking about really trying to keep myself centered as I'm coming through to be here and really using that rotation to come through straight down the wicket, down where those cones are. Well, that was a bit better. Didn't mind that. I can definitely sense the run up too is something that um, just isn't quite really natural, but I'm trying to stay relaxed, which is key. Uh, uh, better, I think. So it was nice, nice hit the stumps. I wasn't planning on bowling that full, but I definitely have a tendency to bowl fuller than shorter. Um, I can also feel something changing my action as I try to put a bit, bit more energy in. Um, and those last two balls, I did kind of re-cue myself to stay a bit more relaxed, which is um, good. Like I definitely felt like maybe I'd lost a bit of that kind of cueing to stay relaxed. So it's sort of a reminder always. Oh. Okay, I think we're making some progress. Uh, it's not quite where I want it, but um, uh, such is life. <laughs> I've just had a little bit of a break, having a look at some of the footage, and I just did that Instagram post that I said I'd do about last week's stuff. Um, so I think for this last over, I'm just gonna dial it back a little bit and just really try to work on a nice kind of release point. That's the takeaway that I want. And I want to continue to, you know, aim to follow the string. I am finding that a little bit challenging to do. And I can feel that as I try to follow it, it's so easy for me to sort of step across myself. Uh, this is all just part of the process. It's only my second session back bowling, so I'm not going to be too hard on myself. And I think I'd like to walk away from these last six with a, a couple of really nice balls, balls with the energy behind the ball. Yeah, I think that was really nice. You could see the line as well. Um, weren't probably exactly where I could have wandered it. Um, yeah, I'll keep it at that. I think that was another quite nice one. Tried to follow through, come a little bit inward there. Uh, I'll have to look back at the footage to see how that looks like. But uh, probably the hips kind of coming about there and then coming through. Something that I put in the Instagram post actually. But still, energy behind the ball. It's a lot easier to keep my energy behind the ball when I'm just backing the intensity off a bit. So we'll, 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 we'll continue here for this session. Well, I said I'd continue there, but I think I actually put a bit, a bit more energy into that one. Uh, I can sort of feel with the run up, um, if I feel like I'm too far away, I accelerate. If I'm too close, I'm slowing down. That one, I felt like I could kind of put some more energy in. So I probably got that run up a lot nicer, to be honest. But uh, it looked like the ball came out where I wanted. So um, I'll take that as a win. One thing I'm actually focusing on here is to, um, I think what I was doing before with the, the running on the string, I'm almost running too tall. It seems counterintuitive like you, you do want to be kind of tall but now I'm kind of putting some energy forward in the string like I'm actually trying to get that hunting forward a little bit before maybe I was just uh, you know maybe a little bit too relaxed which there is no such thing but I was kind of cruising through being a little bit too tall up here and finding it a little bit difficult so I'm actually finding this a little bit easier uh, I don't know how it looks in the footage you guys can have a look back through and compare it to the start and finish and see if you see anything but uh, that's a little note that I think feels good That one came out all right. A little bit more energy there. I'm sure you guys will see. I wish I had the side on footage here because I'm definitely changing how I'm loading up. Uh, Where well, it just feels natural. <laughs> I probably bowled with 17 different techniques. <laughs> Classic fast bowler that was always looking at somebody else's technique instead of my own and thinking what feels right. And this does feel right. So 
Away we go. Oh, fuck off. There we go. I was definitely wet rip there. Oh, it's funny, I just came through and said, I'm just gonna back off, try to get the release point. A little bit nice. But look, just like every fast bowler, when you just get that feeling, you wanna follow it. And I just couldn't help myself, but try to put a bit more energy in. And boy, it feels good. Oh. Oh. Yeah, these are coming out really nicely now. I think that's um, not on my favorite ball. That's back of a length coming through here. Uh, it looked like it was a good line, which you want for those ones. Um, but yeah, well, I'm feeling great. <laughs> But uh, lucky last. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I pulled out the string. I think it uh, still actually works. <laughs> Not the string, I pulled out the, uh, the microphone. <laughs> a, little, uh, a little hazard of the job, I think. It's actually really, really, really funny. Oh, gosh. Well, there you go. If your girl's gonna bowl mic'd up, oops, should I maybe put the, the mic on the non-bowling side and maybe even put the, the thing all the way in there. <laughs> that one felt good as well. One more. Oh. Oh. Well, that's clipped away. Well, I can't finish from that. That was a terrible ball. I know a couple of um, Dutch batsmen who are very strong on their legs and they would have absolutely loved to put that one in the stands. Good thing I'm not playing internationally. But that's kind of been a really interesting last ball series so far here. Knocked out the string. I probably, um, I don't know, I got a little, little, little bit too excited. And uh, in that excitement, I don't know, something happens. You've got to control yourself. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. I knocked out leg stump again. I'm still not where I want it, but I think um, that's a good session. Second session in, I probably put a lot more energy into that one than I expected to be able to. I am definitely gonna feel sore after this. Um, but I spent five weeks in the gym before coming back here. One thing I didn't do, sadly, because the gym doesn't have anywhere to throw med balls, you should do a bunch of high volume rotational med ball work because if you're not bowling, bowling's a lot of rotation. You can sort of build up your vol volumes of rotational work using some med ball stuff, but it's a commercial gym, no one to throw med balls. So here I am. But look, that felt great. And uh, if this was interesting, I hope you guys are enjoying them so far. This is the second one. Um, if you guys have any questions, please drop in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you learned. Uh, I'm the kind of coach that I really thrive off feedback, whether it's great feedback or you say that's absolutely shit. I'm always curious to hear why it's shit so that I can learn if something isn't working, how to make it better. But you know, make sure it's some sort of constructive stuff, not just like, oh, he bowled a no ball, which no one cares about. So yeah, I think that's all I wanna say. Uh, I'm sure I'll think of something later, but oh, until next time guys.